so this afternoon we've got Alison from SAS with us and we're going to have a look at a really, really important uh, feature on the SAS Seller Amp um, tab today. This is your alerts. So this is, everything else is, is nice and interesting. This is the key one that tells you if you're eligible to sell something, if it's hazmat, um, and if it's private label potentially, this is the one that's going to save you some hideous buying decisions potentially. Yeah, so exactly. This is, this, is a, this is a pain saver. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Alison and say hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. hi everybody. Hi. Hello everybody. Um, as you saw, I was just kind of closing down some, some uh, of these panels so everybody can see. I don't know if everybody knows, these are actually buttons up here, but they'll bounce you right to the panel that it represents. So they're kind that's of funny. Good. Yeah, so alerts will take me right to alerts, but I'm there because everything's closed. So anyway, alerts. So yeah, need to understand if there's anything surrounding this product that would prevent you from selling it or even just to be aware of. And that's exactly what alerts is meant to do. Um, wanted to make it really obvious so it wasn't something you had to search for in the product. So you can tell even if you have all your panels closed you're still going to get your red, amber, green alerts coming up with the number in them telling you how many alerts that you have of that color. So it's pretty easy glance just to see what's what's there. Um, so as you can see from our beloved squirrels, woohoo! Oops, bear with me a second. I'm not actually looking at the squirrels. I searched the squirrels, but do, 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 here they come. For those of you that She's have so seen cute. another. He's so cute. Aren't they She's so cute? He's really cute. Awesome. Um, so as you can see, some of them are able to be checked um, without knowing who you are. It's the same for everybody. So um, whether Amazon shares the buy box, whether it's private level, IP analysis and size, those are easy things for SAS to come up with that apply to everybody. Um, so the other ones, however, you're going to want to log into your Seller Central account. And there's an immediate link right there. So all you got to do is hit log in. We will go to the login page and we will say sign in. And then there we are. Do, do, do. If I go back and refresh now, I will see. You don't have to do this with every one, do you? No, just when you, when you sign in initially. Yep, yep. That is that is the first time deal. So, or if you should log out of your Amazon account for some reason. So spouse decides to use your computer to order your Christmas gifts, which would be really silly, wouldn't it? So yeah, there we are now. Now I see the alerts panel is um, has has been able to check in via your Seller Central account to understand if you're eligible to sell it, if the product is hazmat or dangerous goods, um, and then like we said before, if Amazon shares the buy box, um, private label, if it is a private label product, if it might be indicated to be a private, or if it's suspected to be a private label product. And then um, any intellectual property analysis and then the size, if there's any size issues. So what we'll do is we'll show you a couple different examples. You can see our squirrels are a fairly good seller. <laughs> I mean, they're fairly good as far as alerts go. No issues with the squirrels. But if we go to something such as good old Axe deodorant spray, um, it automatically uh, tells you that you are eligible to sell this product. So it's checked if you are eligible via Sella Central. Great you're eligible to sell. Um, is it hazmat? No. Is it considered a dangerous good? Yes, it is on the dangerous what does that goods program. What actually mean? What does dangerous goods actually mean? So there has, everybody is probably getting to know, there are certain, um, certain products that Amazon classes dangerous goods, as in uh, they can cause danger. <laughs> it's the best way to say it. Um, lasers is one of these things that comes to mind, or in this case, uh, dangerous goods, um, aerosols. Random yeah. stuff's dangerous goods. So I, so I was, I, I was strange. selling some Christmas stuff, and yeah. I had like a sand play set. You know, like the little plastic rakes and the bucket, yeah. babe. And that was yeah. dangerous goods because it's a choking hazard. Yeah, exactly. So you need so exactly. yeah. So I think the dangerous and goods one takes a little bit of common sense. So for those of you selling in Europe, um, what happens in Germany is different than what happens in France and what happens in the UK. So you might have something that comes up in another country if you're using the other marketplaces tab to look at a product. It might flag something up that wasn't flagged in a different country. So, so um, um, sorry. So I just yeah. I, I split dangerous goods into two categories. In, okay. in my case, there's no scientific thing. This is how I do it. I go: Is this actually? Is this matches? Is this flammable? Is this dangerous? Is this a proper dangerous goods? If it is, uh, I'm on the dangerous goods program. Amazon enrolled me free and unexpectedly, which is very nice. kind. Very um, nice. 
So I uh, so that can go in, but that has to be sent in by a different courier in a different box. It's quite complicated, and yes. I tend and, to and and hazmat is the same. Our example doesn't indicate that here, but hazmat is very much the same. And you won't, you won't tell you. Well, no, I do, hazmat can't go into an FBM, FBA at all. Right. That's an absolute no. It's no. only FBM. Yes, no. but, it will um, but, but dangerous no. goods act, dangerous goods act, dangerous goods um, products can go in even the aerosols they have but the, the i think something like it's something shipping something out double you have to use tnt because you in the uk ups won't take it and yes. it's complicated if your item is not dangerous dangerous goods i.e like it's something <laughs> like the the sand pit thing i had if it's it, it, a bit of common sense if it's something which isn't flammable and isn't isn't uh, like a dangerous liquid Actually, Amazon just do a split shipment and you don't need to pay any extra. You don't need to do anything. You don't need the logos. You don't need to stick anything on the box. Just be aware that it's probably going to go to a different fulfillment center. Same price. Exactly. Yes. So I kind of take that judgment and I avoid dangerous ones and I sell safe dangerous goods. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, flammable but, no hazmat no but, yeah, but no they own a hazmat program right yeah so that's um yeah that's I, 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 do you know what i'm gonna put a link yeah. underneath this okay that's a good idea this program because yeah yeah if you're if you're especially if you're just getting started like get yourself familiar with those programs or at least put it in your mind so when you're in boots is a perfect example mm -hmm. um you've you've at least got that to question whether it is um dangerous goods um because dangerous oh, goods is, is what is it like two or three months old it's a really new thing as we're filming very, now, yeah, very exactly. new things they're all kind of fine i don't even think amazon quite know what they meant to do with it i think i think there'll probably be some fine tuning yeah to, to, it's very new to us so so yeah, yeah. That's, that's that one so I, I think it probably grew out of hazmat is my personal opinion yeah. of yeah. yeah okay it's not going to start the world on fire but oh a child could choke with it yeah. for, you know so okay sure. to flag it as something so um, okay, uh, does Amazon share the buy box? So this looks at the sales history, um, similar to how you look at the sales history in the ranks of prices, and it just gives, and in the profit calculator, and it'll give you an indication of um, does Amazon share the buy box when they have the buy box? Um, this would show that yes, they're not always the only seller at that price, essentially is what that is indicating, um, which is positive. Um, Private labels. So the best indication of private labels is how many people are selling a product. If there's not more than one seller selling a product, it's probably private labels. So it's something to be aware of. Um, might be a restriction on selling, just something to be aware of. Um, IP analysis. Well, actually, I got a good example of IP analysis here. I thought I had a good example. Forget that. I don't have an example. IP analysis. <laughs> Um, we'll I'm so happy up. to just leave that axe picture up at you. It's in the main room, it's fine. He's a lovely man, isn't he? Is. He? Um, IP analysis, so intellectual property. If the brand is owned and managed, um, oftentimes they will come down on people that sell a, a product that is branded, such as uh, Range Rover is a good example. I saw some Range Rover models that were um, branded by land, you know, that's the Land Rover logo, that's their intellectual property. So they said, no, you can't have that on there. So there is protection for certain brands on Amazon, obviously, and they don't want um, illicit products that contain their brand to be sold on Amazon. I think the famous example for UK sellers is L'Oreal. Don't touch anything no. sold by L'Oreal or involved with L'Oreal, even any of the any of the L'Oreal brands. Yeah, yeah, don't, exactly. Don't do it. Yeah, Just don't do it. It's not worth it. So, and then size. If there's any size issues, if there's any oversized issues, if we look up, say, washing machine, something like that, more than likely. Yeah. With Amazon, um, um, sometimes something which you think is a really standard size is actually oversized. And like really, like for example, like a, a, a tennis racket cover is oversized, but the tennis racket isn't oversized. It's not. <laughs> okay, yeah. it's a standard size washing, a standard size washing machine. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. See, so so sometimes Amazon isn't quite as logical as it needs to be, as you think it might be. So it's good to run this. There's a Wilson that's one. That's it. Have a look at that. There's the a Wilson one that you found somewhere. I bet, I bet you that's oversized, but the racket mm -hmm. isn't. With the go figure. <laughs> oh no, it says a standard size, but it I have... does. Oh wow, it's sorted itself out at last. 
very good. Um, so, if, or, or, or those people did anyway. So, if, so, but if there's if there's something from a size perspective that you need to be made aware of, this will yep. flag it up for you. So, um, you can, if you if you don't like the size of something, by the way, just as an ad, just as a side adjunct, you can uh, email Seller Central and they will put it through. They will put the item through the scanner for you and rescan it. Ooh, that's and then good they'll recategorize it. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, and there you go. You got your quote right above you here in your in your product um, in your product panel. It'll tell you exactly what the size is. So okay, okay. So that is the Oish panel. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Just you know, red, amber, green. Is Give you heads up. Sorry, just a quick one. Um, is there an option if you're not eligible? What happens if you're not eligible? Oh, thank you. Yes, if you're not eligible to sell it, you will have the option to log in. So for example, uh, the beloved, uh, this particular Range Rover model, um, I am not, I am restricted from this category, um, which I believe is probably collectibles. Mm -hmm. um, so what it would do, it, it would direct you to ungate on Seller Central um, I'm not just for the sake of my account, um, but yeah, one click you can get into your account and and ungate yourself. Um, it'll drive you right right to the point in Seller Central where you can where you can uh, process that. So yeah, I think I think it ungates it doesn't it doesn't even take you away. I think it ungates leaves you on the screen. So it, ju it just so it just it does a circle thing and it just comes up successful or unsuccessful. It doesn't even take you. I'm I'm still gated on quite a few bits of box. So it does that. If I get asked why this is, I don't want to get failed. So there's obviously some reason behind why I wasn't able to ungate myself. But you can particular. occasionally press that and it will say successful and yeah. then just literally clear to go straight away. Because it's still you know they're still going to go through Emily uh, everything Emily aren't they that they would if you mainly tried to ungate yourself you know yes. if you submit a request to ungate yourself so oh, so if yeah. you don't meet the requirements then yeah this yes. isn't going to help you anymore. <laughs> yes. But if you if you manage to auto ungate something you don't need to do your 10 products um, 10 units yes. of wholesale and prove all the details so so any basically if, if I scan something, even if it's unprofitable, even if it's hazmat or dangerous, even if it's all wrong, if I'm gated, I will always press the auto ungate button because it will Just, ungate me, it potentially will ungate me for the brand, the product, all the category so it's really you never good, see yeah. that button every chance i get i just hit it and the more you sell the more sales you've made the longer you've had your account the more kindly amazon take to that decision exactly yeah. exactly so I just, so, yeah, just hit refresh yeah. and, it will, and it's all good to go that might be lego actually if not range rover oh that's exactly what it is looks like it. i wonder whether you're gated on land rover or lego maybe he's a very gnarly looking dude yeah, he's not happy, is he? <laughs> he's like, he's like going to be our thumbnail for the video for this one. Yeah, exactly. like, angry, angry, angry look at me. <laughs> so yeah, um, for those of you that have not tried SAS, I would invite you to, to experience the free trial. Um, Emily will put a link into the free trial here. Uh, or you, you can visit sas.selleramp.com and all the in information is there, um, as, as well as more information about the product. Um, and then, yeah, if you're also ready to sign up, guess what? Emily's got a deal for you. Uh -huh. uh, um, if you if you decide to if you decide to subscribe in November, there's a there's a code um, which I put in in the in the description, and that will give you fifty percent off, which is what is already an incredibly amazing value product. Yeah. It's normally twelve pounds a month for a thousand scans, and unless you have a, like ten VAs, you're never going to use that many. Um, and and um, yeah, thousand scans, um, and it's it's good to go. It does everything yeah. across yeah. mobile. Uh, online and the Chrome extension. They all talk to each other and keeps your history. It's just an awesome piece of software you need to try out. Thank you. And yeah, the trial will roll straight into, uh, once you reach your 42 scans on the trial, it will tell you, hey, you've reached the end and you can subscribe right there. Um, it's an easy way to take it for a test drive, like we said, or if you're ready to dive in, just uh, follow and the link that Emily's going to post. You already have some sort of self sourcing software. You can run your 42 scans alongside the one you have. So if you have um, other other services, run them together and just decide which one's quicker, which one's less buggy, which one you like, you like the layout of, and it's yeah. free. So if so, if you then decide actually, do you know what, well, not for me, you've lost nothing. Or you may find it gives you things like the history, which the other ones don't have. So you can run it side yeah. by side to make a really good comparison. 
Emily's done a, a great job of putting all of our chats together. Um, and one of those chats is about setting up your SaaS account. So I invite everybody, if you're going to do the trial or if you're going to subscribe, go ahead and, and watch that first video and understand how you can customize it to make it your own and make it really, you know, give you all the information. It's a really awesome piece of software. I really, I really enjoy using it. It's, it's really responsive. So perfect. Uh, we're going to we're going to carry on with our series next week. Um, I think we've done most of them. Most of them are out and about now on YouTube. I think. Yeah, right. yeah. I think we I think we should probably um, kind of zero in on some of the questions that people are having that yes. they're posting in your group, perhaps, so, and maybe we can. So, if anyone has any questions about SaaS or something yeah. they want us to walk through, maybe somebody wants us to, to go through a working sourcing example. Um, yeah. Just pop your questions underneath us on YouTube or on the Facebook group, and Alison and I will convene and um, create something for yeah. you. Perfect. Until then, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, everybody, out in sourcing land. Bye. Bye-bye.